That's why I told you, your speed in life is your choice. The frequency with which you fill your cloud is the frequency with which the rain comes upon you. And so if you want prosperity in a particular area, all you need to do is to begin to water your cloud. And the way to water your cloud is to release the world. Release the world. Release the world. As you are releasing the world, your cloud is being filled. There are people today who are walking in unending rain because they have filled the heavens with rain. There are other people trusting God for intervention and it's not coming from anywhere because they have not created a system for it. You want to apply the word and see what the word has to offer. Begin to speak it. Listen, spirits know these things. That's why you hear of trends. Everywhere, they are trying to mobilize different kinds of trends. Trends that will take your life backward. You think it's a casual trend. And then you are hearing somebody say, he choked me. Another person say, I don't die. Another person say, he know the walk. Another person say, he don't be. And they are talking these trends. They don't know that the spirit is manipulating them to choke their destiny. Instead of removing mountains, they are planting mountains. Do you not know that if wars can remove mountains, wars can also plant mountains? In Mark 11, 20, 22 to 24, it says, have the God kind of faith. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast away, and you don't doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. And instead of you removing mountains, you are now planting mountains. And in the last two months, you say it took me a thousand times. You have planted one thousand mountains. It will take more than an impartation for you to move forward. And so for you to move forward, you have to remove every mountain you have planted. And so if you are wise, you will start telling yourself, I sow like the eagle. I ride on the chariots of eagles. I fly on the wings of the spirit. There is no limitation in my path. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is why you have to be familiar with the world. Because if you are not familiar with the world, BB Niger will give you words. If you are not familiar with the world, any funny person can give you a word. And what you don't know is that the more you speak those words, the more you create your possibilities. And so most of the mountains stopping you from making speed in life, you planted them. And you're asking God, help me. God is saying, I have been trying so hard to help you. But if I talk, turn you to a direction, you plant mountains there. I turn you to another direction, you plant mountains. Meanwhile, you don't know how to fly. If wars can remove mountains, know for a shorty that wars can also plant mountains. And many people are the architects of their misfortune. When we come for conferences like this, people want laying on of hands. People want impartation. People are sowing seeds. Some people want to sow seeds. They will lie down and hold your shoe and drop the seed at the apostles' feet. You will make declarations over them. Lay hands on them. Some will literally tear your body. I went to Kaduna two weeks ago. When they mocked me and I couldn't lay hands, they now started laying hands on me. <laughs> By all means, there must be a touch. They believe so much in the touch. Since they hold him and they are dragging him to the car, let's make contact. And before I know, I the hands that came on my head, I tried to bend, but I was the way the protocol told me held me. I couldn't even bend. So they laid me into the car. <laughs> my head was aching. They feel they are, they are acting out their faith. But here is an opportunity God has given to them to water their heavens every day. And they have nothing to put there. They wake up in the morning, they speak evil only. Do you not know? He said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. What is the power of the tongue? The power of the tongue is words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That means you can improve the quality of your life and you can reduce the quality of your life. Did you not read what the Bible said? Let no one in Zion say, I am sick. Does that mean there are no, people, no sick people in Zion? There are many sick people in Zion. But if you say it, you have denied yourself of help. Even God will begin to struggle to help you. Because your saying it is your validation of it. In Isaiah 43 verse 26, he said, put me in remembrance of my words. He said, by thy words, 
thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. In Isaiah 44 verse 26, he said, The Lord performs the words of his servant, and the counsels of his messenger. What are the counsels you have given concerning your life? What are the words you have spoken concerning your life? The angels will follow it carefully to administer it. Because the same way you cast out demon with words, that's how you can alter your life through words. If angels follow your words to cast out devils, who told you that's the only one they obey? People are praying when they are praying and they are in a religious posture. They are saying only great things. And they pray for one hour, saying good things. And the remaining 23 hours, they say negative and rubbish. And they don't know that their 23 hours is superior to their one hour of prayer. They think God is hearing them because they knelt down in the, in the dark room. God does not only hear you when you kneel down. Angels don't only hear you when you kneel down. Every time you are talking, you are actually praying. Because prayer is dialogue. As far as you are uttering it, every spirit is hearing. So sometimes you pray to God, sometimes you pray to demons. Because when you use demonic words, you are actually praying to demons. And when you use divine spirit inspired words, you are praying to God. Prayer is not just when you kneel down. That's a posture of reference. But over and above that, what you say determines what happens to you. This is why it becomes so difficult to pastor people. You are praying and fasting for them and they are nullifying everything you are doing on a daily basis. If you don't know what to say, why not keep quiet? God taught me something in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4. He said, life is a warfare. And he said, this is the strategy of fighting battles. He said, number one, take heed. Take heed means hold on to what God says concerning you. Either from the scripture or through prophecies or through encounters. Take heed. When mama was declaring yesterday, she said she saw the trucks coming. <laughs> you need to see. I wish you saw what was happening in my spirit. Before the word fall from my mouth, I catch it. Take heed. That's why we war with prophecies. Number two, he said, be quiet. That means in case you don't know what to say, better be quiet. Your quietness can profit you much more than you're speaking most of the time. People who say the wrong things, it's better they are quiet. If you don't know what to say, instead of rerouting your life backward, better be quiet. Maybe God will send somebody to speak on your behalf. But now that you don't know what to say, be quiet first. And number three, he say, fear not. Don't be faint-hearted. If you know these three things, you will run through life like a chariot of fire. Take heed. Be quiet. And don't be faint-hearted. Refuse to fear. I'm telling you, no matter what we do here, we can stir fire in this place. People will roll on the floor. They will see visions, have encounters. It may not amount to anything. These ones look simple, but they are more powerful than the impartation services. Because what you get out of the impartation service depends on how you understand this. There are many people who are godless. They are godless. Yet they are making more progress than Christians. Because they know what to do with words. They believe in the power of words and they only speak positive words. You will never get them speak evil. No matter what you do. The power for acceleration is a function of the frequency of your utterances. Some people only speak good when they pray for others. When they are praying for people, hear the vocabulary. But when they talk about themselves, they bury themselves even before they start. You want to have speed in life, you must become careful of everything you say. Your words are powerful. You may not know it, but I'm telling you, most of the things you say, they emit death, not life. Life and death are trapped in words. There's no death anywhere. There's no life anywhere except in the words that convey them. Capsules of life and death are words. And when you allow your life to be predominated with death, no matter what you do, you'll be standing and climbing against the heel. Number two, under the oppression of the world, is thoughts. God responds to your thoughts the same way he responds to your words. The reason is because thought patterns are created by words. 
What you believe today is a function of the words you have assimilated for many years. And so when you are thinking, you are actually talking in another realm. In the natural realm, you may not be talking. But in the spirit realm, some of your thoughts are shout. And they are hearing every bit of it. In Ephesians 3.20, it says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you can ask or think. That means the same way God responds to what you say is the same way God responds to what you think. If you are thinking, you are already talking. It's only men who are not privileged to pick your thoughts. But God is picking it. And he's hearing everything you are saying loud and clear. This is why the operation of the word is very important. What you hear and what you say. Don't let anybody speak fear into your life. Don't let anybody speak intimidation into your life. Don't let anybody speak evil into your life. Don't let anybody speak sin into your life. No matter what it is, respectfully decline it. Because if you allow it to be planted, one day you will pick it up. And the moment you pick it up, spirits will begin to act upon it. The reason many can't make progress is because they are burdened with negative words. They are too many. They are heavy on them. They are thinking it and they are saying it. I'm saying this because something heavy will happen to you this week. But in order not to abort it before next week begins, you need to understand these things. Because abortion is not only in the natural. Thank God the U.S. government shut it down. But it's not only in the U.S. that such laws should be enacted. Some of us in our lives, abortion needs to, the law against abortion needs to be enacted. Because we are aborting our destinies every day by thoughts and words. That's why you have met the biggest of preachers, had the best of encounters, the greatest of impartations, serving God in the best of places. Yet, you are wondering, there's nothing to show. Your thoughts and your words are what you are receiving. What you are going through is a report card of your thought pattern and the things you have uttered. It's an aggregation of your thoughts and words. If you change your thoughts, change your words, after a while, you will see that your life will adjust to align with your words, to align with your thoughts. You may not have a dime yet. Start thinking the right things. Start saying the right things. And most importantly, the things God said about you. And see how your life will shift like a tornado. Number three, the administration of the world is by action or by obedience. It's not enough to talk. It's not enough to think. As beautiful as these two are, it's more important to act. And so when you talk and think, begin to act accordingly. There are many people, they speak the best of things, but when they go out, their actions betray their words. This is why they cannot make progress in life. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 12 to 14, it said, whoever uses milk is a babe and is unskillful in the word of righteousness. It said, but strong meat belongs to them who are of full age, who by reason of use have exercised their senses. So the key word is what? By reason of use. If you keep talking and not acting, you are a failure. If you keep thinking and not acting, you are a failure. At the point we come, you will discover you just hyped yourself. Your action is what validates your words and your thought pattern. The Bible said in Acts chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2, talking about Jesus, it said, of all that he both began to do and to teach. Jesus was not a talker. He was first of all acting what he was saying. And that's why when you study the book, it's called the Acts of the Apostles, not the speakings of the Apostles. You saw them living out the things they said. If you say you are a success, let's see how you dress. If you say you are a success, let's see how you talk. You say you want to be a president and you are talking like a tout in the garage, you are a big dreamer. Wake up and come into reality. You say you will change this world and you are not taking actions to change yourself. How many books have you read? How many mentors do you have? What are the principles you are living by? Those are the proof that actually 
you are heading in the direction of changing your world. Who told you you can wish your way into changing your world? Find out those who are making impact. You will find discipline. You will find diligence. You will find focus. Deliberate things that they gave their lives to. They can tell you that their lives are modeled after principles. As touching what they eat, there's a law that governs it. When they sleep, when they wake up, how they dress. Have you not seen that great men have a style of dressing? It shows you how detailed their lives are. They don't just wear anything. Find out Chinese presidents. There's a color of ties they wear. Check an American president. There's a color of tie they wear. It shows you the level of detail that is put into greatness. It's hard work to be great. No man becomes great casually. Every great man you see, he labors at it and he does it for a long time. It's only lazy men that think they will wish their way into the top. It doesn't work that way. Because when you are rising, your generation will make demand of what you have. And if you have nothing to show for it, there is nothing you can get from your generation. Because your world will give back to you based on your contribution. This is why we work hard. It's not a function of age. It's a function of understanding. You can be 21 years old and you tell yourself in the next one year, I will create a paradigm shift. And then every week you start reading a book. See what happens after six months. When you are suggesting, making a suggestion, even your lecturer will take note. Even your pastor will take note. And like joke, they will pick you from the back to the front. Everybody who is sentimental can be offended. But bro, this world responds to results. Greatness is not cheap. Find out those who are making impact. Most times, 24 hours is too small. It was Chino Achebe that said if he had the opportunity, he will buy back his youth. Because of what he saw that he would have done with time. And somebody wants to be great. He's eight hours on YouTube. What is he looking at? Pictures and movies. He wants to change the world. He's on Facebook for four hours. Flipping through meaningless chats. And pictures. Dress codes. And then he shows up because he attends service. Two services every week. He thinks by attending two services, he will become a change agent. You are a, a big joker. The biggest of the century. Beyond coming for service, there is a discipline that you must imbibe. It was George Washington that said, discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small number formidable. It procures success to the weak and esteem to all. Anybody can become anything depending on what he does to himself. Don't blame where you came from. Don't blame it on your age. All of that is not a factor. Blame it on the value you carry. And for you to put value in yourself, you will labor at it. Because even your senses abhor value. Sit down to read for 30 minutes and see the level of focus and discipline that is required. And then compare that with sitting down to watch a movie. Suddenly, the 30 minutes that was like eternity in the place of reading can become like a minute ant in the place of movies. And then you will know that becoming great is not a joke. You say you are a businessman. How many, how many businessmen have you learned from? What are the principles you know? You, it's not just about receiving impartation. Sir, there is skill of negotiation. It takes a lot of skill. Skill to be able to negotiate in the market. It takes a lot of foresight to be able to predict what will be relevant tomorrow. That's what the ordinary man doesn't see. And if you have that level of foresight and skill, you can be making progress per second. But it will take labor to get there. Many believers take things like this for granted. They are thinking wrongly, talking wrongly, and they have no action to back where God has promised them. If this is your situation, forget about acceleration. I will deceive you if I tell you, you will go forward just like that. Nobody goes forward like that. It will distort the balance of nature. If God takes everybody forward like forward like that, who will be the ones to bear the bodies of a generation? It doesn't work like that. Impartations can create momentary intervention, but lasting success has foundations. Actions. 
and not just actions but the right actions this is the operation of the world I told somebody when you have known the word of God it controls your emotions it controls your mind and it controls your action if you have gotten there you are success anywhere anytime it's not your 